Oh, the dog's jumping on me. Mm. That is a pet peeve of mine. I'm out here on the trail. Yes, my hair is wet. Um, I wasn't planning to make this video. I wasn't planning to make a video today. Um, I was hoping that I would tomorrow, which would be Monday, but um, I don't know if I'm going to have time tomorrow either. So, um, I had taken a shower this morning and that's why my hair is wet. Um, Patrick and everybody is still asleep, so I don't want to run the air dryer, like the blow dryer. So, I was reading, um, and the same thing keeps popping up in my head. So, I decided to go ahead and do this, like the spiritual preparedness video, and share this with you guys. Um, because not going into details on this video, but I've been in such a weird, almost, quit jumping on me, confused, where do I go from here, Lord, kind of mentality. Um, not in a sense of like physically, but spiritually, honestly, um, personal things in my life. Um, we go through these periods, I believe all of us have felt lonely, all of us have felt maybe misunderstood, uh, there's bugs, um, quit jumping on me, um, there's bugs and the dog, and this week, my prayer and my cry and my plea to the Lord was, why did you give me this life? Did you choose this life for me? There are things that seem like it's a little bit harder for me and Patrick. No matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, um, we could be almost walking the same type of life, the same type of uh, walk as someone else. And things just are given to them. Things are just made easier for them. And the other day I said, even just the smallest things seem like... It's so much harder for you and I, and I don't understand. Is, the, is there something in the spirit happening that we need to pray about? Is there something that I need to pray about? And I did the other day. I was like, I rebuke. I just went down the list of all the things that I could think of. And um, I walked this very trail, and I was like, Lord, I don't, I don't understand. You give me messages. You give me words. You give me dreams. Um, and you don't, I don't feel like, you know, people take you serious or people even care or understand. And I got to this place. I'm, I'm actually in this place and it's a scary place where I just don't care. I don't care. Um, what am I supposed to do with this Lord if nobody cares? Um, Lord, where do I go from here? And so I'm back to a place of solitude. I love my solitude. I love my alone time. Um, I just want to be at home. I want to work on our home for our family. I want to... I've gotten to keep my grandkids a lot this week. I want my grandkids to be over. I want to create the, you know, like a fun and safe environment that they can create memories here with me. Um, I want to grow my garden, preserve my food, um, and just live a peaceful life. And that's what I've wanted for a long time. I've wanted that, actually, that, that's been my whole life. Um, I can remember back when the boys were small, I worked as a mail carrier and I started off part time. And so most of the days I was home and I took care of the home, I mowed the yard and, you know, I did all the things I cooked and I raised my kids and I was happy in life. Um, then the enemy comes in and, and he starts to add things to you that don't belong to you. He starts to create chaos in your life and he starts to put things on you that that's not yours and then we carry them like it's ours 
And so I find myself so busy with what? That I've neglected my home. I've neglected my, my yard looks like a field. My garden hasn't even gotten off to nothing because I'm running around trying to do all this stuff for everybody and not getting, taking care of my own family. So things arose up the last few weeks where I'm just like, I gotta let stuff go. Do I let my business go? Do I let all these, all these other ministries go? Uh, what do I do? Where do I spend my time? Where do you want me, Lord? Not where people say I'm supposed to be, but where do you want me? Um, which leads me back to the thought of, I can move up to the mountain somewhere and just live forever. Away from people, people might not realize it, but I'm not really a people person. It makes me tired to fellowship, <laughs> if that makes sense, and I'm being totally honest. I love creating videos for you guys, for YouTube. I love um, the skills of homesteading. I love learning the skills of um, trying to uh, live a sustainable life outside of the government system. Um, and these have been both mine and Patrick's goals for a long time. And it's not coming to fruition like I envisioned. And so I stop and I ask myself, why? What am I doing that I'm not supposed to be doing? Um, I know this probably isn't making sense to you guys. I'm just going to get into what I was reading was the parable of the ten virgins. And five, it's in Matthew 25. And five kept their lamps full and had extra oil. And five did not. And when the bridegroom came, those that did not have enough oil, the doors was closed to them, right? Because they were frantically trying to, the last minute, get their oil. So this has been on my mind and my heart for a while for two reasons. One, for our physical preparedness. And the other for our spiritual. And our spiritual is so very important. Um, I've not attended church regularly like I used to. I've just been in a place where I only want to hear from your voice, Lord. I really only want to hear from you. So I withdrew from things. Um, seeking his clarity. And... Not feeling, not allowing myself to feel like I'm obligated to anybody but him and my family. Um, so with that being said, it's not up to a church. It's not up to a minister, a man, a woman of God. It's not up to a pastor. It's not up to an evangelist. It's not up to a prophet. Um, or a teacher, or any of the fivefold, it's not up to them to feel my oil or your oil. It's up to us individually. So many of you watch things online. Many of you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And you don't have a church that you go to. And I'm beginning to see why. I'm beginning to see why many of you choose not to. And I'm not on here to say... You have to or you don't have to to go to heaven. I'm on here to say, no matter what you're choosing, seek the Lord in what you should be doing to keep your oil full. Which is reading our word. Reading our word. Knowing God. Like, truly knowing Him, and that is through the word. Have, having a regular prayer life communicating with Him. Throughout the day, all day, you know, as you're going about your business, in your garden, if you're washing dishes, if you're mowing the yard, whatever it is. Those are the things I've come to realize is that 
no matter what I'm doing, even if I'm choosing wrong by pulling out, um, cause I know a lot of, a lot of, I know like we're living in such a time where it's so crucial because there are so many out there that are lost and being, they are being deceived and they need to know the word. They need to know about the Lord and it's up to us to share the gospel with people. I, I know that. But if we're not in a good place within ourselves, how are we supposed to share the word? If our oil isn't full ourselves, because we're running around everywhere trying to do everything and we're running low, how do we pour out? That's where I'm at. How do we pour out? So, I have had so many moments of just crybaby moments this week of, I don't know what to do. And a lot of it is within myself, not really knowing. I know who I am. I know who I am. And I know what's in here. But people can make you feel bad for not doing what they think you should be doing. And then I'm so sensitive to that, that I feel that. And then I try to do things because I know people think I should be doing these things. When in here, that's not what I feel like God's telling me to do. Um, it even affects my videos. It even affects the video content that I feel like I need to make or not make. Um, but you know what? God had revealed to me a while back that someone else's anointing isn't going to look good on me. That I can't desire to be like other people. Yes, the gifts and callings are without repentance. So all of us, no matter who you are, you have a gift. You have a calling and you have a purpose. Um, but we feel like we have to get in a clique. Or we have to get in a group. Or we have to get in a ministry. We have to be just like them. But if that's not where God has put you and that is not what he's asking you to do, that gift and that calling isn't going to look good on you. You're not going to be able to operate in that house, in that gift or whatever. So I'm back to this place of keep me rooted in you, Jesus. If John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, is the only verse that I can stand on right now, knowing that he's my Lord and Savior then so be it because we get so carried away with other things that we start to get confused and then we get so caught in between who believes what who don't believe what and then we get so confused and then it begins to divide and it begins to tear down and people start hurting people start leaving people start feeling abandoned people start feeling betrayed and then that's how the enemy works. He starts to divide people. Divide churches. Divide ministries. Um, and I'm not about that. So. I'm just walking and releasing my thoughts to you guys. Um, to let you know my heart is here on YouTube. It has been for a long time. He's brought us this far. He's given us all this wonderful people that watch us, support us. Many of you have become members of our channel. And we've not I've not put out the content that I know I should be putting out because I'm so busy doing other things. I've neglected what I feel like God has put in my heart to do. So Three, week, three or two weeks, two or three weeks ago, I asked Patrick if I could just take a step back. Because this is the one thing that him and I both agreed that we wanted. Was to live a self-sustainable life. And to broadcast our life on YouTube. And show people what we're doing. And teach people what we're doing. What works, what doesn't work. And have this community... And God has allowed us to begin to generate revenue on here, you know, just by making these videos to help offset the cost of trying to live a sustainable life. And I praise him for it. But I have neglected it. And, um, 
So I'm out here just walking, waiting for him to wake up so I can dry my hair, thinking about the parable of the ten virgins, thinking about how important it is that no matter what, it's up to me to keep my oil full. So that if maybe I need to share a word on here with you, that I have enough to pour out. And that it's not just any old word, that it is a powerful word that's going to help somebody, that's going to encourage somebody, that's going to be just what they need in the right time. So, that's that, y'all. Um, life can get very busy. Sometimes life feels harder for some of us than it does others. And you look around and you're like, how is this so easy for them? And then I said, Lord, if I'm not walking in your will, if I'm not doing what pleases you and it is blocking a blessing in my life, I want you to show it to me. I want to know what to do because when you walk in his will, I'm not saying everything's perfect, but everything feels good. It, it, you just feel good in the Lord. And I haven't been there. I haven't been in that place where I feel like life is okay. Um, the past two days have been super hard. But my son graduated. I posted a little childhood memories of him. Um, graduated high school. So I got one more. Chloe. She's going to be in 8th grade next year. And then we'll get her through high school. And those accomplishments feel good. They're not my accomplishments. They're his accomplishments. But it feels good that um, my kids are going to be successful. My kids are going to do good in life. Um, and then my grandkids have been over this week and played in all four of them and that's tiresome but I know I'm sowing into their life I know that that is not even though raising children to the world doesn't seem like a big deal it seems like you know it's like less of a woman actually that's what God has designed us women to do he has designed us to take care of our families and that's where I'm lacking and I feel it I actually f I feel it I feel that I'm neglecting my duty oh I'm about to cry because I'm running around trying to do all this stuff in the name of the Lord and he's like daughter I bless it but that's not what I've asked you to do in this season and, and back in the summer I know I was walking this trail and he said repurpose like there's a repurpose and I, I feel like I have tried to do it other ways and I haven't stopped and done it the way he's told me to do it because it doesn't look good to like people are like you work for the Lord <laughs> out there there's souls to be saved I know but my family my grandbabies they need to be taught of the Lord too. They need to be taught of the Lord. They need to learn how to pray. They need to learn how to, to, to sing praises unto God. They need to know the word. Is that not important? Oh, Jesus. So, um, I'm just being ever, this is me. Y'all are getting the real me today. Don't jump on me, dog. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sing a song. I'm gonna sing a song for you if you're still here and you're walking with me. This is a long one. But I hope that for those of you that don't have a home church, that don't have a home body, that don't, don't aren't involved in a ministry, but you love the Lord, just know it's up to you. Keep your oil filled for his return. And that he puts people directly in your path in your life. It may not be thousands. It may not be hundreds. It may just be one. But if you're filled and you stay filled. You could impact the life of even just the one. The one. And don't be afraid. If you know that you know. That you're supposed to say something to even just that one. Say it. Say it to even just that one. Because God may have purposed you. He did purpose you in that moment. 
to speak that just to that one person that could save a life, that could change a life, that could restore that person back to the Father. So, let's not make this harder than what it should be. Let's absolutely not make this harder than what it should be. It doesn't have to be hard. It's not a competition. We're all a part of the body. When confusion comes in, that's when you know Satan's working somewhere. That's when you need to stop and take a step back and be like, Lord, I need to spend some time with you because this isn't right. Something's not right. And then let him redirect your focus, your heart, your mind, connect in the spirit, and just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Don't go out and seek advice from people. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but sometimes we need to shut the voices out and only hear from the one voice. So, yeah, things seem a little harder for us right now. Tor you know, the tornado, like all the storms kept blowing my plants away, knocking the greenhouse over, floods, it is 50 degrees today. Um, other things, you know, um, financial things. If I should continue my business or not continue my business. Where do, what do I put my hands to? All these things is what's going on in my brain and my mind. And confusion starts. People around me are dividing, leaving. And the Lord showed this all to me. He showed me this in dreams. He showed me this and I knew that this was coming. I knew that this was coming. I knew it. But I didn't know how to pray for it because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what I was seeing or feeling weeks and months ago. I knew this was coming. So, oh Jesus, should I post this video? I'm going to sing this song. We sung it at Celebrate Recovery last Monday. It's just been a song on my heart. Because it's the only song I can really sing right now because the blood of Jesus covers everything. Christ covers everything. He is the one. He's the one that we look up to. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. I feel like it's going to echo. I don't want to get loud. I feel like it's going to echo through the, the halls and people are going to, people are going to um, hear me. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power it soothes my doubts and it calms my fears and it dries all my tears it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power. 
It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley and it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power okay that's it because <laughs> we have a house like right over there and then we live up there and have neighbors that's on the other side and I don't want anybody to hear me so I'm just gonna just kind of whisper the song um so I'm gonna be I'm gonna say goodbye look how green it is out here it's pretty green it's pretty I've walked enough I've sobbed enough I've talked enough and uh, there goes the dog I'm gonna go in and see if everybody's up. I'm gonna pour me another piece, another cup of coffee, and see if I can get my hair dry and head to church. And then um, we um, are gonna meet with a group and um, go and bless a house today, and that's exciting. Um, I'm happy that God has placed these people in my life. They take me for who I am. They love me for who I am. There's no expectations and. It feels good. It feels good. Thanks for watching, you guys. Pray for us. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. Thanks for your support. God bless. Have an amazing day.